Truth Espresso, episode 59. Face it, we all would rather sleep in this morning. <sighs> That's why God gave us espresso, to kickstart our zombified corpses into hyperdrive. <laughs> And now, giving your mind and soul the morning shot of truth it craves. This is Truth Espresso with Daniel Minnick. Well, hello there, and thank you for tuning in to this episode of Truth Espresso. My name is Daniel Minnick, your host, and I am continuing a series that I had started months ago on economics from a Christian perspective. In the last episode, I addressed one of Paul Krugman's favorite illustrations for how he thinks an economy should run, how he thinks an economy would benefit to learn from practices that happened with the Capitol Hill babysitting cooperative. And if you haven't listened to the last episode, I encourage you to listen to that one. That was episode 58, The Economy Doesn't Need a Babysitter. And so I argue that we don't need some elites at the top to push the buttons and pull the levers and fiddle with the money supply to try to get people to spend what they otherwise do not need to or would rather not spend for their own good. And Paul Krugman thinks that there needs to be someone in control of the money supply to try to get people to spend more money and really lose the purchasing power that they have saved up and earned with their hard work. And so Nobel laureate economist Paul Krugman suggests forcing people to spend rather than save for their own good. He thinks saving is bad for the economy and saving ultimately leads to depressions that can only be cured by interventions to encourage and stimulate spending. Even if you need that money to pay off debts, uh, economist Paul Krugman thinks that debts are okay as long as there's economic activity going on, and he doesn't seem to think that it matters much what people are spending on as long as they're spending And so I would encourage you to listen to that last episode because this episode is kind of a sequel to the last one. So the last one was The Economy Does Not Need a Babysitter. And this episode I have entitled The Economy Doesn't Need an Alien Invasion Either. (laughs) No, this is not... A COVID Files episode. Although if you haven't listened to the COVID Files episodes, I would encourage you to listen to those too. But I cued the modified X-Files theme (laughs) uh, to go along with our topic today in this episode about alien invasions. And yes, the same Paul Krugman, who on the last episode suggested that the economy needs a babysitter to babysit people's spending habits and saving habits. In this episode, the same Paul Krugman, you are going to hear him speak himself in some audio from YouTube clips. And these are back in 2011 and 2012. But I can assure you that Paul Krugman has not changed his mind about any of these suggestions. And given the slump that we are in, that is basically manufactured by government lockdowns and restrictions on businesses that have caused people to lose their jobs, be collecting welfare, and spending less because there's less for them to buy, and they may be saving some money, the ones who still have a job, but the government certainly is spending a lot of money on our behalf with crazy, unheard of, completely historical, record setting, precedent setting, spending on the order of trillions of dollars now over the course of a few months. 
And the same Paul Krugman, back in 2011, suggested that an alien invasion, or at least the thought of an alien invasion, was what the economy would need to get people spending money again. Now, of course, you know, if, if you're trying to save up to pay off debts, it's not as if, you know, you're not going to spend any money. And when you save up money, of course, uh, real economists realize that savings ultimately lead to spending later on. But economists like Paul Krugman, post-Keynesians, think that the solution to people reducing their spending is for someone to spend on their behalf immediately. Because if people stop spending as much and start saving more to pay off debts, uh, that's a big no-no for Paul Krugman. And so, without further ado, I'd like you to hear Paul Krugman, in his own words, suggest that at least the threat, the perceived threat of an alien invasion, is what the economy needed back then during its recession. And, of course, he would not change his mind about it for the current COVID-induced recession. But even if you were, wouldn't John Maynard Keynes say that if you could employ people to dig a ditch and then fill it up again... Uh, that's fine. They're being productively employed. Pl employed. They pay taxes. So maybe the big, maybe Boston's big dig was, was just fine after all. Think about World War II, right? That was not. That was actually negative social product spending, and yet it brought us out. I mean, partly because you want to put these things together. If we say, look, we could use some inflation. Ken and I are both saying that, which is, of course, anathema to a lot of people in in, in Washington, but is in fact what the basic logic says, it's very hard to get inflation in a depressed economy. But if you had a program of government spending plus an expansionary policy by the Fed, you could get that. So if you think about using all of these things together, you could accomplish you know, a great deal. I mean, if, if, we, if we discovered that uh, you know, space aliens were planning to attack and we needed a, a massive buildup to counter the, the space alien threat um, and really inflation and budget deficits took secondary uh, place to that. Um, this slump would be over in 18 months. And then if we discovered, whoops, we made a mistake. There aren't actually any space So we aliens. need Orson Welles be a better... is what you're saying. No, that's a, that's a, there was a Twilight Zone episode like this in which uh, scientists fake a, uh, an alien threat in order to achieve world peace. Well, this time we don't need it. We need it in order to get some fiscal stimulus. Now that was Paul Krugman on Fareed Zakaria's program suggesting that what the doctor ordered or what the aliens ordered... <laughs> is that it would be a good thing if a bunch of scientists could somehow suggest to people and basically lie to them about the threat of an alien invasion. And because people are supposedly just sitting on the couch not knowing how to engage in economic activity because they're trying to pay off their debts and get their house back in order, that, you know, we need to make them cough up some more money when they're already hurting and they see that their wealth is depleted because they were spending money on houses, overvalued houses, that they thought were worth more than they really were. They thought that they could withdraw money for them, like an ATM machine. They thought they were actually wealthier than they really were. They thought they had more liquidity at their command than they really did. And now someone has to pay the bill. Someone has to pay the mortgage back to the bank for those houses. Someone has to pay off the loan. Someone has to pay off the credit card bills. And what's the best way to do that? Well, you have to cut spending on other things so you can, ahem, spend it on paying off debts. Now, Paul Krugman, for some reason, thinks that some spending is better than other spending. Like, doesn't he think that credit card companies and banks with their mortgages need to make a living too? And when they make loans, they really need those loans to be paid off. Now, I'm not going to say that the banking industry is, you know, angelic with this process, but it's strange that, you know, Krugman thinks it's bad to save money to pay something <laughs> like credit card debt or loans because we've got to do more consumer spending you know go out to movies go out to eat 
buy electronic items, whatever, just splurge, and that that somehow helps the economy. But when you find out that you're poorer than you thought, what's the best thing to do but to get your house in order? But according to world-renowned economist Paul Krugman... What makes perfect common sense is actually the devil in the details. But now, before we get back to alien invasions, I would like to take a little detour, a little lighthearted detour, and play a promo from fellow Christian podcast community podcaster James Watkins and his Five Solas podcast. The Five Solas Podcast, a weekly podcast hosted by James Watkins that is dedicated to the Reformed theological distinctives and their continued relevance for the church and world today. Grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone, Scripture alone, to the glory of God alone. Join us each episode to discuss the truths of these foundational rallying cries of the Protestant reformers, the prophetic challenge they present, and the sound wisdom they provide, as we delve into their biblical meaning and theological significance and reflect upon and appropriate their truths, we will be engaging issues in the church and world. Each week, from the rich insight of Reformation Christianity, we will be showing all the manifold ways in which this material helps challenge and direct the current church in its life of worship and witness, and confront the idols of our age with biblical discernment and a sound apologetic, in a manner that is as open and transparent as possible, while challenging you to seek the glory of God in all that you do. Soli Deo Gloria. Thank you, James, for your very enriching podcast on the five solas of the Reformation. I have very much enjoyed listening to episodes of your podcast and seeing the wisdom that some of our friends from the community bring to the table that you have on as guests to talk about the role of the church in the world and the foundation of Scripture and faith alone and Christ alone. And I will provide a link to the Five Solas podcast for this episode's promo in the show notes, so I encourage you to check them out. Now, back to alien invasions. Paul Krugman thought in 2011 that the economy needed the threat of an alien invasion to stimulate activity and that that would somehow end the slump in 18 months. Of course, I don't know how he calculated 18, but he's the economist, so we shouldn't question him about his time frames and his ideas for how the economy as a whole needs to settle its depressionary problems. Now, if you think that the economy doesn't need to worry about an alien invasion, then I can say that you're thinking straight. You're thinking like an economist. Someone like Paul Krugman and his post-Keynesian friends are thinking like policy wonks. And everything in that world is topsy-turvy, cart before the horse, completely upside down. Now, Paul Krugman didn't just make this alien invasion threat suggestion as a one-off thing. He repeated it. And by the way, it wasn't an episode of The Twilight Zone. It was an episode of The Outer Limits. But, you know, we can forgive to err is human. But that's not the issue. Let's hear Paul Krugman the next year on Real Time with Bill Maurer. <laughs> I have actually suggested... I have actually... I actually have no, am I getting, getting wrong? Am I, no, I you actually, got it. Since, since it's hard to get people to do... I mean, much better, obviously, to, to build bridges and roads and, and, uh, and, and health care clinics and schools. Uh, but, uh, all right, well, but, but my proposal, I, I actually have a, a serious proposal, which is that we have to get a bunch of scientists to tell us that we're facing a threatened alien invasion. And in order to be prepared for that alien invasion, we have to do things like build high-speed rail. And, 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 uh, you know, and, and then once we've recovered, we can say, whoops, there were no aliens. But look, I mean, whatever it takes, because right now we need somebody to spend, and that, spend, that somebody okay. has to be the that's, that's, that's our So we could see that Paul Krugman was still at it the next year, suggesting that the thing that an economy needs when people were flipping houses, when that didn't work... 
And, of course, economists from the Austrian school could easily tell you why that didn't work. Why the housing bubble was something that should never have happened, and it's a result of Federal Reserve policy setting interest rates too low, encouraging people to make long-term investments like buying houses, and that caused a bubble, and then it burst, and you don't fix the solutions caused by excessive debt by adding more debt. But that kind of common sense doesn't pass the minds of people like Paul Krugman. But let's think of what this threat of an alien invasion would do to an economy. So let's ask a few questions, shall we? The first question I would like to ask is, what happens from forced stimulus caused by false information because you see Paul Krugman thinks that the economy can thrive based on a lie that a bunch of scientists could present evidence crafted on purpose to try to get the whole world or at least the nation I mean because I don't know how you wouldn't get the whole world to worry about an alien invasion, but let's say just the nation, the United States of America, if somehow a bunch of scientists could lie through their teeth and convince everyone, convince the media that there's evidence that aliens are going to land and threaten us and that we need to prepare for it, what's going to happen? This is going to be a forced stimulus imposed by false information. Now, what does that remind you of if you're thinking about what had just happened then? Didn't people have false information that stimulated them to buy houses at overvalued prices? And so they were acting irrationally based on false information and getting deep into debt to buy houses that they didn't really need, that they didn't need to live in. They wanted to sell them. And people were treating houses like they're some kind of stocks or some ATM, something to trade and not something for which a house is built for, which is to live in for a while. And so during the housing bubble, we had the situation where people were stimulated to borrow and spend money based on false information. And now because there was a necessary recovery from that, where people had to rebalance their activities, the economy had to adjust when that burst so that resources could be shifted in more productive venues than spending on a bunch of houses, a huge glut of houses that no one's living in that people think are worth more than they really are. But when that went bust, Paul Krugman thinks the solution is more of the same, but this time something even more drastic. Let's not even build houses for people to live in. At least there's some utility out of that, at least potentially. But then Paul Krugman wanted a fake alien invasion. What would that do? Well, a lot of resources that could be used for building businesses, new entrepreneurial startups that actually help people's lives get better, make things more efficient, you know, to build a better mousetrap, that kind of concept. A lot of resources in a fake alien invasion situation would be squandered from productive use, you know, capital goods, consumer goods that the economy would need that people can benefit from over to unproductive uses like building big, strong bunkers for something that's not going to be needing them. And so, yes, there will be some people who would benefit. The people working on constructing those things would be getting paid to do that work. But what about people who wouldn't work in that business? There's a lot of resources being diverted to building bunkers and defense and weapons for something that's not going to need them. So think the cost of food would start to go up because you'll have fewer farmers and more armaments manufacturers 
you'd have fewer people working for Apple making iPhones, and maybe some people working for Apple would start to work on making weapons technology rather than bigger and better iPhones. So just, you know, you have to think about things like this. You have to think of the what ifs. And so a lot of resources in this situation would be squandered for uses that are of no use. But then what happens when this stimulus ends? Dr. Krugman said that the slump would be over in 18 months if he got what he wanted. A lot of panic and a lot of work on things that don't help us out. But at the end of those 18 months, even if it were true, what would happen then? Because he said, whoops, there were no aliens. Well, then what do we do with all these armaments? What do we do with all these bunkers? Do we just destroy them? Well, think of the waste of resources there. What else could we do with them? Think of what they could have been used for. They could have been used to build businesses, gyms, schools, restaurants, you name it. Anything but a useless bunker or some super-duper hyper-ballistic missile to shoot at nothing. And even if we did shoot it at something, that would still be destructive. That wouldn't help anyone out. So in Paul Krugman's stimulus, the cost of living for most people would increase. Now that hurts. That does not help an economy. And at the end of that, would things really plateau? Like, we've reached a high point in the economy, now we can just let things continue on being better after that stimulus ends. No, after those 18 months, when people had to realize that there were no aliens invaded, their activities would, of course, change, and those changed activities would cause a recession, right? And, of course, Paul Krugman would have to think of something else because, you know, like the boy who cried wolf, you're not going to be able to play the fake alien invasion card again to get people spending more with squandered use of valuable, scarce resources. And so let me just give a verse for this scenario from the Bible because I believe the Bible does not in any way help Krugman's case or any of the Keynesian followers with their twisted version of economics. So Proverbs 13 verse 23 says, Much food is in the tillage of the poor, but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. So what is this verse saying? Even poor people work hard and save up to get food that they need to tie them over for the winter. There's much tillage, even from poor people, because they've got to work hard and they've got to be frugal. But... <laughs> Here's like Paul Krugman in this verse. There is one that is destroyed for want of judgment or lack of good judgment, lack of discernment. And so just like the fake alien's suggestion, Paul Krugman's suggestion would be more like destroying some of the labor that the poor people put into tilling the land and growing crops because that would stimulate them to work more and people to spend more money on crops because they cost more. Now, I'm going to end this episode right here because I have more information about Paul Krugman's alien invasion reasoning and especially how he compares it with World War II because Paul Krugman thinks that World War II, the spending on war, the spending on armaments, the spending on paying military personnel to do things to prepare for war and possibly die in combat and spending on things that would be used for destruction was actually good for the economy that actually increased wealth. And the next episode, we will talk about that, and we will talk about the parable of the broken window. So the next episode, in a sense, is kind of part two to this one. But I will let it stand on its own 
we will make references to Paul Krugman's alien invasion in light of breaking windows for the good of the economy, or at least so someone like Paul Krugman would think that a broken window is good for the economy. But what does the Bible say about things like that, the blessings of destruction? Stay tuned. Thank you for waking up with Truth Espresso. Good morning, and God bless your day. Hey friends, Daniel Minnick here again. If you liked waking up to this episode of Truth Espresso, I would really appreciate it if you would rate it on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or whatever application you use to listen to Truth Espresso. 